In this video, we'll examine organic compounds. Organic compounds are compounds that contain carbon, but the major elements of life that you'll find in organic compounds include not only carbon, but oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. What are carbon compounds? Well, first, let's get to know carbon. Here's a Bohr model of a carbon atom. In it, you can see that it has four outer shell electrons. This means that it has four locations where bonding can occur. This can result in all sorts of different carbon compounds. Here are a few of the simpler carbon compounds and three of their different configurations. The first kind of carbon compound would be a straight chain. And here you can see a chain of six carbon atoms and you can see that each one of the carbon atoms has four locations where it can link to other atoms. You can also have branch chains. Branch chains are slightly different and you can see that in this case we have our six carbon backbone but we also have a bond between a carbon and a carbon here and another bond between a carbon and a carbon here. Maybe the most common structure that we'll see are ring structures. Carbon atoms can form single, double, or triple covalent bonds with each other. So for example, you can have two carbon atoms bonded to each other by a single bond and the remaining spots are filled with hydrogen, which we're just going to draw as little sticks. We're not going to actually bother putting in all the hydrogens. It's sort of a organic chemistry shorthand. We can have double covalent bonds between carbons. Okay. And in this case, you'll see that each of these carbons has already used up two of its bonding spaces, so it only has room for two more hydrogen atoms. And you can also have triple covalent bonds between the carbon, and that would mean that there's only one more spot for hydrogen to bond on each carbon. So you can also have single, double, and triple bonds between other atoms. It's important to note that all of these bonds are covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are strong bonds where electrons are shared between atoms as opposed to ionic bonds where electrons are actually transferred from one atom to the other. Let's take a look at common functional groups in organic compounds. Functional groups are groups of atoms that are frequently attached to carbon skeletons. These are the regions most commonly involved in chemical reactions. So, so far we've looked at straight chains, branch chains, and rings. Hydrophilic functional groups increase the solubility of organic compounds in water. And hydrophobic functional groups decrease the solubility of organic compounds in water. That's because hydrophilic functional groups, you can think of them as water loving or liking the water. They actually can dissolve in the water very easily. They're not repelled by the water. Uh, they actually might be attracted to parts of the water. Hydrophobic functional groups decrease the solubility of organic compounds in water. And that's because they tend to uh, be repelled by the water. They're not attracted to the water. So if you have one or more hydrophobic functional groups on, let's say, a long chain of carbons, that part of the molecule would tend to not associate with the water. And we'll see that uh, that has some really interesting repercussions for how these molecules behave in watery environments, like the watery environment within the cell. Let's go back and take a look now at the functional groups that can replace those hydrogens on those carbon chains and rings and branched carbon chains. First one is the hydroxyl group. These are alcohols. Examples include ethanol, glycerol, and sugars. So on any of those molecules you would expect to see an OH group. These are polar and hydrophilic. They tend to dissolve easily in water. The next functional group is the carboxyl group. You can see that there's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then a hydroxyl group. This whole thing is called a carboxyl group. These you would find in carboxylic acids. Things like amino acids, fatty acids, and sugars. And they also tend to dissolve easily in water. They are polar hydrophilic and they also happen to form weak organic acids. 
The third type of functional group is the amino group, and it's almost immediately recognizable because of the nitrogen. It's a nitrogen with two hydrogens bonded to it. These are called the amines, and you tend to find them only in amino acids. They are also polar hydrophilic, and they form weak bases. Phosphate groups are also immediately recognizable because they have a phosphorus bonded to three oxygens. These form organic phosphates, and you would find them in molecules like DNA, ATP, and phospholipids. And like the others, they are polar and hydrophilic, and they're also weak acids. The last group is the methyl group, and the methyl group doesn't have a class that it belongs to, but you would find them in fatty acids, oils, and waxes. And if you think about oils and waxes, things like butter and lard, you know that they don't mix well with water. Can you guess what the characteristics would be? They're different than all the others. These are nonpolar and they're hydrophobic, so as a result, they would not easily dissolve in water. If you have a methyl group on an organic molecule, it's going to cause that molecule to behave very, very strangely in water. Let's do a quick check. Which of the functional groups would not easily dissolve in water? If you said the methyl group found in fatty acids, oils, and water, you're correct. That's your introduction to functional groups and organic compounds. In the next video, we'll start taking a look at the four different macromolecules that you would find in living things.